Um, something I'd love to ask you is obviously Dream Theater, you and your other projects, there, there's fast parts. And I know you, when you improvise with each other, there's, you also are able to do really fast lines. Right. And uh, that's something I, I, I'm not that skilled. I don't think my brain can be able to think about Oh, I got to go there and I got to do it this way. Yeah. Uh, so how, how do you think about creating fast lines if you do it spontaneously? Like how, how does that present yourself in your mind first mm. before you're able to play it? Does that make sense? Well, yeah, it does. I, I um, Let's see. So first of all, the way that, music is made is as we know very comp can be complicated and everybody has a different approach but for me through all the years of training at the piano um i've developed you know a certain technique which includes a lot of patterns let's say let's think of it as like you know you know, a keyboard player is going to learn how to play scales, right? In all different keys or whatever keys. Let's say I learned how to play. Well, actually looking at it from a more limited perspective will give, uh, will allow us to understand maybe a little bit how this works. Let's say you learned an A minor uh, blues scale and you learned, uh, you know, a C kind of like a major scale and you play them really, really well. When you sit at the piano, if you're going to come up with something fast, the only things that will probably come up that you'll play are that A minor thing or the C scale. There's nothing else fast that you're gonna really be able to do unless you sit there and maybe write it out slowly or just you know take a week to like compose it hmm. or figure out some other thing that you can play. So ver so I, so what I'm saying is that ver you know that the lines that are written are kind of um, they come about from this kind of like technical connection between your brain and your and like my hand like somebody who just sits at a you know we're not talking about somebody who just sits in front of a computer and types in a melody you're talking about dream theater and me and how i might come up it's very much based on this this kind of like uh building of a foundation or a library of riffs and patterns and scales and like I could sit at the piano right now and go and I'm thinking shapes, but my fingers have, have gone into those, a lot of those things before. If I'm playing inversions, I've practiced inversions. I can do that. If I'm playing scales, I can do that. And that means I can then mix them up so that I can go, you know, start with a scale and then go into an inversion and maybe start with another scale. Not to say that it's not an inventive process because it is, because then I have to say, okay, how many times am I going to do this little inversion riff before I break into the scalier thing, before it goes into a chromatic thing, and before it goes into some wild jumping octaves thing? So there's a lot of creation involved, but I could sit and improvise and play really fast lines where you'd be going like, how do you conceive of that so fast? But the reason that I did is because my, my fingers have been trained and are connected with my brain to do these patterns. It's almost like uh, the other part of the other part that I find really interesting is like there's certain funny like we were saying on the piano, everything is in a different position. So I do this exercise where I'll like take like a C dominant seventh chord and I'll move to a D flat dominant seventh chord, like root position and then root position again, and then I'll move to the next possible c7 chord going up which would start on e in this case right and all the notes follow and then the next possible d flat seven and then keep going and keep finding the next possible inversion so your hand is really moving in all these interesting ways and then you add like the left hand but then what i like to do is i like to carry it further and further to see how far i can take this and how like almost like smart my hands can be and so and it's not that i'm any particular kind of rocket scientist at all but what's happened what i've noticed ha has happened for me at the piano 
I mean, this is after what, like 57 years of playing the piano, but I can play like, you know, that what I was just talking about, like in a mirrored position and talk to you at the same time. Like, and you kind of go, and my fingers are just kind of doing this funny thing where they're moving because it's not that much movement. You know, there's just different amounts of movement between the notes and how is it really happening? Mm. It's almost like the fingers have a brain in themselves, mm. you know, like, because if I'm talking to you and I'm doing this at the same time, like what's really going on? You know, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's, it's bizarre. I don't even understand <laughs> it myself. So there's some interesting thing happening to where the right. fingers, you know, it's, it's like somewhat, I guess it's muscle memory <laughs> that comes into play and patterns that you've played. I don't, I'm not quite sure how it works, but you know, people think that music is like making music and doing all these cool things that people react to, like playing fast or you know, doing cool chord changes or whatever is like magic, mm -hmm. right? Oh, this guy just does that. It's like out of the blue. He just, you know, landed on the planet and he's just doing that. And it's like, well, oh my God. Well, I really, I'm here to tell people that yeah, music has a magical element to it. And there is are people with a lot of talent, but it also takes a hell of a lot of work. Anybody you see going sat there and figured out a bunch of stuff before they could make that happen. It's not coming from nowhere, you know, <clears throat> even like to be able to maintain your cool while you're playing like, you know, all this crazy stuff that might be more than just like piano skills. That might be some skill that they learned uh, in meditation or in some kind of like uh, exercise or something along the way that allows them to be in control because there's a lot of control that has to happen when you're playing like difficult passages. First of all, if you're insecure, which is a personality trait, then how are you going to deliver what you need to deliver in a consistent and, and uh, positive kind of like way? It's not going to happen. Because um, it's so interesting the way that you're, you can't, you can't disconnect who you are as a person to who you are as a musician. Unfortunately, there's so many things that come together, especially when it comes time to like perform. Because performance is, you know, getting in front of people or even in front of a camera and being able to deliver, you know, uh, everything, everything that you are in a way that, that, satisfies the audience and also satisfies yourself. So that's something like I'm always working on. Like, can I deliver under pressure what I can do when I'm just in my room by myself? Hmm. And that is, yes, work at the piano, but it's also work in other ways. I, I was, I was um, working with uh, a guy who does like exercise, but also blends in some like yoga type stuff with it. And there was this one kind of exercise we were doing and it was really helping me a lot because I was feeling like when I was playing really difficult stuff that was like going on and on and on. And I had to not fall off the, the rails, as they might say, but keep it going and not make a mistake. I was feeling like that training outside of playing the piano was really helping me. Nice. So I don't know, it was a long answer to your, to your question. No, no, but no. That's super interesting. 